In the last video, we saw what is hypothesis testing and what is null and alternative hypothesis. Here, in this video, we will be uh, talking about hypothesis testing steps. So, what are the steps which we are going to follow for hypothesis testing? So, uh, actually, uh, you'll see that there are so many approaches for hypothesis testing and everything is almost same. But here, I will give you the distinction between two approaches. One is classical approach and one is p-value approach. Okay, they, they are more or less same, but still, I will tell you the distinction also. So, in case of classical approach, we have uh, divided the region into two parts. One is acceptance region and one is critical region. Okay, how we will find that, I'll just tell you in a moment. Okay, and what we do, uh, like, let us see, let us look at the steps of each approach. So, the first step is same for both the approaches, classical as well as p-value. So step one is you have to state your null and alternative hypothesis. We have learned this about it, uh, about this in the last video. So this step is same for both the approaches. For example, suppose we 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 have a discuss uh, like we have discussed uh, the mean problem. So this is our null hypothesis. Suppose h naught is that mu is equal to mu naught, and this is our hy uh, alternative hypothesis that mu is not equal to mu naught. Okay, so step one is clear that we have to define the null and alternative hypothesis for both the approaches. Step two is for both the approaches that you have to set a significance level or a confidence level. So this will be given in your questions, but there are approaches to set also like we can set the confidence level also, but we will not discuss that. So this will be given. So what is the difference between significance level and confidence level? Confidence intervals we have already studied in the last chapter. So we know that if uh, like alpha, uh, uh, we have seen that what is the uh, like, you know, uh, confidence level is basically, uh, for example, we were talking about 95% confidence level, right? So significance level will be 1 minus confidence level. Okay. So significance, let me write down clearly. Significance level will be 1 minus confidence level. Okay. So we were talking about confidence levels like 95%, 99%. Okay. So significance level will be denoted by alpha. So this will be given. So step 2 is also clear. Nothing to do till now much. Just you have to state your null and alternative hypothesis. Now, in step 3, what you will do because you want to test your uh, hypothesis, so you will work on a sample. So you take a sample of size, whatever. I have taken 100 here. That is just an example. You can take any size, uh, sample of size n, and we measure the sample statistics. For example, we are making a claim about the mean. So here we will be uh, finding out x bar, which is the mean of your sample. Okay, so you will get a, a like a sample statistics and it can be a z value or a t value like we will convert it into z value or t value depending on what kind of situation we have for example we have already seen that uh, x bar minus mu over sigma by square root of n is z distribution if sigma is not given then we will be working on x bar minus mu over s upon square root of n that that is a t distribution so basically you will get a t or z value for your sample okay that is in your classical approach let me first finish the classical approach because after this step the two approaches are different now if the above statistics lies in the critical region this that you will get a value of statistics from here i told you we will define the critical at the acceptance region what will be your critical region because alpha is given so accordingly you will define your critical and acceptance region because we have seen what is the uh, interval for alpha uh, 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence level right so we already know how to define our acceptance at critical regions so we will do that in the problem also so if if this statistics which you are finding in step 3 that lies in your critical region then it means that you will reject h naught because you are away from h naught h naught means b is here okay and if this values lies in the acceptance region, then we say that we fail to reject H naught. Okay. So this is for the classical approach. And for the uh, P value approach, what you are going to do after calculating the statistics, suppose you, you your statistics is here, then what you will do, 
you will see you will find out the probability that your statistics reaches this far because this was your assumption that mu should be here but this is what you get so you will see that what uh, if you assume that h dot is true what was the probability that you can reach this far so basically you will find the probability of this tail at this tail like you are this far away from mean what is the probability of this tail at this tail that is called p value if p value is greater than alpha it means that when h dot was true you were expecting this uh, outcome for your sample because your statistics is here like your sample tells you this value and you are expecting this value if if this probability is more than alpha it means that the null hypothesis is true you will accept null hypothesis and if this value this probability is less than alpha then you will reject your h dot does that make sense so does that make sense so what we are saying here that if we assume h not to be true your null hypothesis to be true what is the probability that you will reach this far from your uh, assumed value in null hypothesis if this probability is high it means that we were expecting this output if we assume that null hypothesis is true so if this value is greater than alpha you will accept h not and if this value is less than equal to alpha you will reject h not so we'll do one problem so that you understand everything nicely we, i will do this question with both the classical approach and the p value approach so we have the average weight of all the residents in a town is 168 pounds so somebody believes this so this is status quo a nutritionist a nutritionist believes that true mean to be different so she believes that this is not true she measured the weight of 36 individuals and found the mean to be 169.5 pounds assuming the population standard deviation is 3.9 so question is at 95 percent confidence level is there enough evidence to discard the null hypothesis so this is our question so let us see how we can do it with the classical approach let me write down the classical approach here. If nothing is mentioned, you can use any approach. So the first step is we'll we'll state the null hypothesis, which is mu is equal to 168, and your uh, alternative hy hypothesis, which is mu is not equal to 168, right? And then your uh, significance level, you are given 95 percent uh, confidence level. So significance level is basically alpha 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95 so that gives you alpha is equal to 0 0.05 right so this is your significance level and we know that we know that 95 percent confidence interval for uh, in this case your population standard deviation is known okay for uh, x uh, for mu is you know this value we already did it in the last chapter mu bar uh, x bar minus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n comma x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n right so if we find out this thing right so here uh, th this is a confidence level or we can just say that if if we uh, like if if i assume my z to be x bar minus mu over sigma by square root of n then this is a normal distribution standard normal distribution so this mean here is zero and this is z alpha by 2 and this is z alpha by 2 so alpha is 0 0.05 so this is 0 0.025 and if i compute the value from the table this is minus so this is minus 1.96 and this value is 0 0.025 this is 1.96 okay so this now you know that this is our this inside here is your acceptance region so basically this interval this interval is your acceptance interval and this interval here let me mark in green this and this this is your critical region means you will reject your null hypothesis here critical region so this is what you are going to do in your classical approach fine so this was your step two now in step three you will calculate your sample statistics so let us find out what are the things given to us n is 36 
x bar is 169.5 and s is three uh, sigma is 3.9 okay so we know that our statistics z will be this is our sample statistics so this is x bar minus mu over sigma by square root of n x bar is 169.5 mu is your 168 upon 3.9 over square root of 36 so this value is 3 2.31 now you can see that this value is more than 1.96 so this fourth step is since the statistics value from last step belongs to critical region therefore we reject h0 and we write it like this we reject h0 in favor of h1 does that make sense so you see what is happening here that your data is not supporting your hypothesis this so whatever your data is this data this data here is not supporting your hypothesis it means that on the basis of the sample which you got you reject your null hypothesis so now let us do the same problem with the p-value approach so you see now here in in classical approach you get intervals one interval is this one interval is maybe like this uh, union of this interval and this interval so you can see where your value is lying if it is in the acceptance region you'll say we <coughs> accept the null hypothesis if it is in the reject uh, critical region you'll say that we uh, reject the null hypothesis now if you look at the p-value approach step one is same your h naught is mu is equal to 168 h1 is mu is not equal to 168 step two is your alpha is 0 0.05 given okay alpha is 0 0.05 given uh, here you don't need to calculate anything else step three is you are going to take your sample your sample here is again n is equal to 36 uh, x bar is equal to 169.5 and sigma is equal to 3.9 okay so now what you have to do you have to uh, you have to basically find out what is this uh, probability right if you look at this the uh, this value the corresponding z value is we just saw it was uh, 2.31 okay so the corresponding z value is 2.31 so it means that you were expecting zero to be your mean okay but you are here at 2.31 okay so you want to see that so th this was we, we were expecting this thing that x bar minus mu over sigma by square root of n should be normally distributed if h naught is true h naught true means i'll replace this with 168 so here i i, I found the same parameter 169.5 minus 168 over sigma is 3.9 divided by square root of 36 so this value is 2.31 so i was uh, if i assume that h naught is true what is the probability that i can reach this far this away from the actual mean so that probability will be this area this region plus this region so that will be now p value will be what is this this is telling you what is the probability what is the probability that you should be 2.31 away from 0 okay so that is twice the area of shader region so that is equal to twice uh area of shader region is this this is 1 minus p this this will be 1 minus p that z is less than is equal to 2.31 fine twice we'll be doing it twice is that okay right so this will be 2 into you will get this value from table so this is 1 minus uh, 0 0.98956 so this is 0 0.02088 now this p value is less than 0 0.05 therefore we reject 
H naught. Because you see what is happening that you get a probability of getting the sample which you are getting to be less than your significance level 0 0.05. Therefore, you reject your null hypothesis in favor of H1. So, so the idea is in this situation, your claim is not you know supported by what you are collecting from data this is your data right so th that is the idea so, and these are the two approaches we'll be doing more problems okay thank you